So there are many different types of videos on YouTube that will tell you that jigs catch big bass, how you need to use this trailer with a jig, try to do this with a jig, and here's this trick. But guys, today on Bass Fishing Declassified, I'm going to go over a couple different types of jigs I like to throw in the summer, but specifically, we're going to go in depth on where to throw them, go over the retrieves to help you put more fish in the boat during the summer months. Okay guys, so the first jig I'm going to talk about, which is probably my favorite jig to throw in the summer, and it's caught a lot of big fish for me in recent years, and even on a recent, recent fishing trip that I went down to Lake Fork, is a football jig. Okay guys, now when you think of football jig, for me, I think of heavy jig. And I say heavy, half ounces is almost as light as I will go. I want to go half to three quarter. Part of that is, is because you want to feel the bottom. You want to fish hard bottom areas with a football jig. It could be rock, it could be shell. You're looking for these hard bottom areas to drag this on. Now, I know with Johnny's jig that he's came up with in recent years, the Fish the Moment Offshore jig, he did this wire weed guard to specifically be able to throw it in brush. And this does not get hung up as much as your normal typical jigs like I have right here. This is just a Strike King football jig that I've, I probably have about 10 of these in the box that have even not been used as this one because I've thrown these jigs forever, okay? But when he came out with the wire weed guard on his jig, this became one of my jigs that I threw only when I throw in brush piles because of that wired weed guard. Now guys, let's go in depth on areas to look with a football jig. Okay, the first example I'm going to give is from a lowland reservoir. I'm going to try to do examples from different types of lakes for you guys. So this is a lowland reservoir down there. I believe this is south of Dallas. I've never been here. So as I'm looking at this lowland reservoir, I'm looking at the main lake, and I'm looking for high spots that could potentially have rock. And I say that we're going to go find one that is right here is a potential good high spot. There's also, it looks like a main river channel from here. Hopefully my cursor's showing up. So I'm going to zoom in now. And here's that river channel. You see it showing an old bridge that goes through. And then right here is our little high spot. Okay, now this one's not as deep. But it's still a good place to throw that half ounce size football jig. If it was something a little deeper, that three quarter would probably be better. But remember... The football jig, we want it on the bottom. Now, think uh, one thing about this high spot, okay? Before I even, you know, have been here, I once again do not know the lake. You see this road that's coming across, and there's another road coming to meet. There's a little intersection right here. There's a good chance rock, guys, is going to be somewhere right here. And let's say this high spot doesn't have any rock on it. And then there's rock right here. That's really what we want. Okay, we want to find something different with the bottom here. Great place to throw a jig. So guys, I'm going to share something uh, from a recent fishing trip that I fished. Something similar to this at Lake Fork, okay? So there's bait fish in the area. You're seeing some fish suspended even around the bait. And you're, you're probably like, why are we throwing a jig? Well guys, they're fishing a spot similar to this. The crank baits wouldn't get bit. Swim baits wouldn't get bit. But guys, the jig caught the bigger fish. And that's just sometimes how it goes. The big fish will eat bait of bait fish, of course. They're gonna eat gizzard shad. They're gonna eat your thread fin. But there are times where they just want the the bigger profile. They want the crawfish. They want the brim. They're gonna go for a, a one, you know, meal, two meals in a period. And that's one reason why we want to throw the jig, because it will catch the big fish, and this is a prime area to throw it. Next example is going to be from a Highland Reservoir. Now, guys, I'm not just here saying, hey, look at points and secondary points. We're looking for some high spots, humps, um, near the main lake to where you can target some fish with a jig, okay? Just not your traditional go throw up a point. So this is an island right here, guys, okay? You see the channel going across. And here's a high spot, okay? Now, there's one good thing about this. There's a couple here. So there's a high spot here. And then when you go right down here, here's another high spot. And then as you keep going, there's one little one right here. Now, these guys is what I call the needle in the haystack. If you go and find fish on this, there's going to be a time you might load the boat up. But it's not always the case. There's timing with it. These fish are going to typically be on the sides of this maybe, suspended. But when they are up here, they're going to eat. So just right here, some typical places. Now remember, we are looking for hard bottom. Now we can look for a brush piles. Brush piles can be fished here, can be placed here as well. There's a good chance there are brush piles on these spots. I'm just gonna put that out there. And so, um, and another is I'm just going down here in these creeks, okay? Here's, you know, right here, we got a, a point right here off of this island that's going down to this creek, okay? 
and as you see there's a deeper spot here there's a deeper spot here and then we have this nice high spot right here okay so there could be brush piles placed here there can be brush here um, I'm not sure if there's timber in this part right here on this point, but this little high spot's a spot I would look to throw a football jig. Now the next type of jig to throw in the summer is one I don't throw as much, and, and I'm going to go over one way that I'm actually throwing this jig more now as I experimented with the last summer, going into this summer as well. It's a swim jig, but guys, when you think of swim jig, you think of shallow water, grass, uh, more loose grass. You're swimming this thing. I always grew up here, and hey, if you run it fast, run it faster because you're not running it fast enough. But guys, there's a couple different ways and retrieves to go with the swim jig. And with the swim jig, it is a fun bite. You're fishing shallow water. There's at times you see the fish even come up and, and boil up on your swim jig. Man, guys, like I said, you can't complain on the bite. It's just not something that I do as often. Even where I fish around grass, vegetation, it's just not something I just don't go out and do. Now, what I have done, though, with the swim jig, which has been more new, is swimming these in open water chasing suspended fish. And we're gonna go into that, how I've even swam these across brush piles. I know right here, this is the Mega Bass swim jig, and it has a little tail spinner right there, a little underspin. Johnny last year even was swimming this in timber, catching fish up at Table Rock. Pretty cool to go see that. And then real quick, just to talk about it, here is this, this, this is just, this is Six Sense Divine, uh, the Six Sense Divine braided swim jig. This one you see has the weed guard. This one does not. If I'm fishing that open water, chasing suspended fish, I've taken that weed guard off. It's not my idea. It was the guy that came up with it. Um, you know, the guy that's made these things famous, Josh Jones. And I'm gonna go into depth here in a minute on another area. I'm actually throwing this swim jig. But let's go into areas talking about the swim jig. Okay, so let's first talk about the fish in the swim jig in shallow areas. And man, I could probably talk about this um, for about 10 to 20 minutes because you know, I'm not even bringing in the river part, but this kind of relates to it. So uh, first of all, you know, guys, you know, fishing a swim jig, you're gonna need some type of cover you're going after. I'm gonna share from a recent trip um, at Lake Fork, for example, that we just took because uh, this is a lower image of Fork right here in this creek, but guys, after it being low, for uh, over a year it was six foot low over a year and now all of a sudden it's back to normal a lot of grass and just stuff on the bank is there and the fish are kind of they they weren't all offshore yet and there were still some fish up shallow and we caught some fish uh in this area right here that had a lot of grass and not just grass like the grass just wasn't all up on the bank okay it was kind of sparse and that's something you're going to want to look at them the, for example when you're fishing a uh, swim jig up here an example you're going to think of the, the the forage that the bass are eating okay uh, are they going to be eating shad or bren when I uh, went up here specifically, I was thinking of, hey, potentially targeting bass that are going after Bren. But then we would see, you know, bait flickering shallow across the surface. There's so much bait in these Texas lakes. I know it's crazy. But one example here where we caught the fish at, you know, we went in here and, and there is a legit creek running through here, okay? And I, I kind of followed that by the Deep Dive app, okay? The Deep Dive app has a new feature. That's a water inflow uh, chart. It's pretty neat. It shows you the water inflows that of, of the lake. And it also will um, show you how strong the inflow is depending on the current. So I just kind of used that as a tool. And, and we did, you know, the, the, the couple days previous, there was some range, you know, and I was just trying to think of that as a way of, hey, fresh oxygen, water coming in. But, uh, but we caught our fish more towards the main lake. Like I said, you know, right here, you have these points right here. Now, this little section was a high spot, okay? I say high spot, it's a shallower spot, and you see the wood, of course, but this up here just had areas where there was grass on it. And man, these fish were out here. Like I said, it would be one fish off this grass, one fish off this grass. Now, this point right here, which the channel comes by, and you see all this, this looks all good. There was grass all out here. So guys, this is just something to look for when you are fishing a swim jig shallow, okay? Like I said, there was grass all in this area, but I went for these areas that were more shallower, flatter, and that's just something for you to help you to target when you're going attacking the shallow fish. Okay guys, now for the swim jig for the suspended fish and offshore fish, I'm going to share this example at Table Rock, and this is way up the river, okay? Way up the river, uh, water visibility still, you know, two to three, four feet. And uh, here's the spot right here. So we have a main lake point, a channel swing point. Pretty easy to pick out, okay? 
and this is where I watched Johnny last year do this with the uh, with the swim jig offshore swimming it. Okay, now just me from uh, me and from my experience, I've caught some fish here and there with it. You know, I've done more of just chasing bait and you know following using your down your 2d and forward facing sonar chasing bait and throwing it but this is something i'm going to share that I, I think you can do without forward facing sonar for my guys that do not have it uh, all you need is 2d for this to be done so this is a channel swing point it says flooded timber right here but there's actually timber right here as well okay so the fish there were fish on the bottom of the point okay there were fish on the bottom this is a, a rock point right here okay and Johnny caught some fish here, I believe, with the football jig. But the bigger fish were suspended in the standing timber here. So how he attacked them was with the swim jig. I think he did try swim bait and didn't get any takers, but for some reason that swim jig got the job done. So he had it paired with a, uh, with a Strike King caffeine shad. So that swim jig, he threw it out. I think he counted, you know, down. I mean, he counted it down to maybe you know 10 feet to kind of keep it in that range and, and i think you would say you count to three to five seconds threw it out and count it down and then sw and then swimmed it through the timber or you don't even got to really get it through the timber guys once again if you do not have forward facing sonar you can just i mean if you get the edge of it i mean them fish they can see further than what you think and if they really want to eat it they're going to come out and attack it okay so guys just just an example here of how to use the swim jig offshore in situations when the fishing gets tough okay guys now the next type of jig and this i've even had a recent fishing trip or maybe a month ago where this actually came through for us and it's the hair jig guys and, and this is one that i do not think is thrown as much i know johnny's made plenty of videos on fish at the moment he's really good with it he of course is all about the cumberland pro hair jig and man this is a good one i mean there's even teeth marks on this dude i don't think you can tell there's even teeth marks on this guy but another swim jig that i have thrown which is just i'll talk about the reason in a minute it's just the spro uh, uh the spro hair jig now the reason i throw this one and I have the Cumberland, it's just the heads are different. This is more of a rounded type head. This is more of a skinnier type head, okay? So I just like to throw the different ones in different scenarios. They actually have a different fall rate, just a little bit from watching it on the forward facing sonar. Guys, like I said, this is a very specific technique and a very timely one. Now let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, the areas to go look for with a hair jig. Okay guys, a great area to throw hair jigs. Of course, I will say the harder bottom is something that's to consider, but we're going to be looking for ledges. Right here is a main lake ledge. This right here is actually Highland Reservoir. And on this ledge, it is, it's, it's pretty nice. We have the, uh, the, the main river channel going right here. Then you have this high spot. And right here is this drop. And this drop, the contour lines are tight together. I mean, it is a drop. Now, typically, uh, you might throw a football jig up there first. And a football jig, you know, it, it, it will get hit on the fall if the fish are real aggressive, okay? But also, uh, let's say you're not getting bit here and the fish uh, that are here are just suspended on the ledge. And that's when a hair jig can trigger some big fish to bite. So you're going to throw that hair jig out here let it sink and then you're going to reel that dude three to five turns as fast as you can and when you reel it it's going to come off the bottom and then it's going to pendulum excuse me then it's going to pendulum right back down okay and this little action that the hair jig gives man can trigger big bites on a recent fishing trip we were fishing some structure kind of similar to this it's more of a road bed i'm going to get into that on my next example uh, i was took one of my former a uh, student angler, good friend of mine, Cannon Harmon, and down uh, to a lake that I we fit that I fish quite a bit, and we got on this hair jig bite, and man, he had a blast. It was really his first time getting on it, and it was cool to see a fellow friend of mine uh, get kind of get on this bite. Cause it can be very, very timely, but when it is, man, it will trigger fish to get bites and big fish. Okay, now I'm in a lowland reservoir. This is Lake O'Pines. Okay, uh, down here in I believe East Texas are okay, and I fished it quite a bit. Not this part of the lake though. So let's kind of talk about this real quick. So you see right here, we have a long flat point. There's a road, then the road makes a bridge, crossing the channel, and then you get over here. Now I want to show you all of this because it's like this road bit being in the middle of this creek could be a couple different hard spots to where those bass could relate to. And if you're throwing a football jig or a structured jig and, and you're not getting bit, then that's when you need to try the hair jig out. So I'm going to now show it on Google Earth, okay? 
So this point is long and flat. It looks like those could be potentially stumps, stumps right there. Could be a little hard bottom rock. Uh, and then so that road bed it showed going right here. But then also we have this high spot here and there is some rock there as well. So these are just two little areas that are more, you know, kind of sneaky off the beaten path. And, and I say off the beaten path, I mean, it's pretty, you know, you, you pick it out right here on a map, but it's just not going up and down the bank. And you're not fishing extremely deep. As you see, it shows it right here, 12, 11 foot. Let's say it's even 15 foot. It is not deep. This is a place where those fish can go out here and, and hang out for the summer. And the hair jig is, is a good tool to target these fish. Definitely if there's a road bed. I love throwing it around road beds. Guys, of course, I mean, I'm not just going to go and pick up and throw a hair jig right away. Unless if I see them suspended and they're just not looking, you know, like they're feeding. Of course, a crankbait is going to be a, an, an easy lure to throw first at these. But everybody throws a crankbait nowadays. These fish see a crankbait. They do not see a hair jig as much as a crankbait. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Give the hair jig a shot. Okay guys, the last jig that I have in my box that I throw in the summer is a structure jig. Okay, now, and I say structure jig, this is kind of like my all around jig, okay? I actually swim these sw structure jigs, okay? Like I talked about the swim jig earlier. I actually swim these dudes probably more in the shallower area, in the bushes, and the cover than some of them, uh, some of the uh, original swim jigs, mainly because if I'm on a budget, I can fish this versatile many different ways. So the structure jig, of course, is meant to be fished around structure okay it's also a good jig to skip or so just for me I don't like to have a you know like three boxes of jigs this jig that jig this jig so just guys if you're still watching this and you're on a budget check out these structure jigs this is the strike king it's the Denny Breyer structure jig okay this is a smaller one here except I got a plenty of these in my box from just recent years just because they're so diverse i can swim them i can fish them around rock i can skip them throw them around docks this is just the six cents uh they're they're divine a uh, hybrid jig as they call it hybrid meaning of course to fish around a bunch of different ways and one thing that i've not talked about yet too is a, you know talk about the diverse is these go good in grass if you're fishing submerged grass weed lines this is a good jig to swim through the grass now guys let's go look in the areas to target with these jigs okay guys so for the structure jig one good thing about the structure jig hybrid jig also okay is it can be fished uh, a lot of different ways fish a lot of different cover and i'm going to use this whole area as an example right here there's a lot going on in this area there's docks in this area there's shallow points brush piles deeper docks and so, for example, we have deeper docks right here, okay? If, if you find fish related to deeper docks, and if there, you know, if there's rock nearby, of course, that's an easy target to fish a structure hybrid jig. I like this little indention right here. I'm just going to call this a little ditch, okay? This little ditch that could be right there. Uh, there could be grass here as well, submergent grass. Um, and, and that's one thing, I, and I think the last time I f went to this lake, there might have been some grass right here, and, and a that hybrid jig swims well along the in the grass and on the edge of that grass guys one thing about the structure jigs of course is like i mentioned earlier you can skip them okay you can skip those lighter jigs well so you can fish them there i mean also as i'm going to go back here right here in this little creek back here and i'm going to bring in google earth okay this goes back to the deep dive app earlier of the water inflow chart you have some uh, water looks like that comes in here a true creek this is an area i would try to target with that hybrid or structured jig whatever we're going to call it there's docks here so these docks i'm just going to make a guess with this inflow might hold bass more typically than some other areas just because there's going to be more oxygen more oxygen is going to bring your forage forage is going to bring bass okay there could be shallow brush piles in here there probably are shallow brush piles this lake has a ton of brush piles man-made brush let's say you have a brush pile that's sitting you know even off the edge of this dock in six to eight foot okay I would not be afraid to swim that jig along the side of the brush pile. Of course, you can fish it in the brush pile, but I would start off by swimming it on the side. Now, of course, the one good thing about this, uh, the, the structure jig, and I'm going to go back to the Navionics here, you see out here all of these high spots, okay? There's potentially going to be brush. There's potentially going to be rock. There's even a little fish icon here for take that for what it's worth. This is where that structure jig is meant to be fished. We're not fishing super deep. Uh, and, and I know, guys, you could fish as other jigs I've mentioned here earlier. 
uh, this even is a nice little drop off right here. Great, you know, for, for the hair jig if they're suspended. But guys, let's say you're on a budget and you just want one jig. That structure jig can get the job done, okay? So that structure jig can be fished up here on these high spots on the edges. Look at that point right there. This one here as well. And of course, if there's brush, it can be fished in the brush also. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what is your favorite jig out of the four that I've talked about. Leave me a comment below and we will see you in the next one.